I'm Josh and today I'm going to show you how I made my drill press table motorized. So I built this pretty awesome drill press table lately, but then I ran into a problem with it. One of the problems I found out with it after building it is I need some clearance to raise and lower it with a handle and I don't have that. I've seen people make extensions out here so you have the handle out and you can do it that way but that's not cool. We like cool here. So let's see what we're going to do. Alright, to solve the problem, to move stuff we're going to need a motor. So I bought this guy, right angle gear motor and has a torque of 4 kilograms per centimeter. So it's a pretty good speed. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like on the drill press. Okay, so I mounted this just on here um, temporarily. On, and I just want to test how it goes. Okay, so this motor was pretty slow, especially on um, going up. Occasionally it would get stuck and it would skip. I would say it's almost just powerful enough, but it was also a little slow for me, again, especially on the up. So I want to say it's underpowered. And so I, instead of going with that and being frustrated with it, I went out and procured a bigger gear motor. So this one was 12 volts, 16 watts, 110 RPM, and 4 kilograms per centimeter of torque. This is 24 volts, 80 watts, and 160 RPMs. I don't have the torque value on it. So I spent $30 on this one, I spent $50 on this one. And so this one, just based off of the power, is going to be a little over four times as powerful. And so that should be plenty for us to raise and lower without any problems. So swapping the leads is not very convenient. So what I got is I got this double pull, double throw switch and I printed, 3D printed an enclosure for it. So when I press, uh, it's momentary. So up is one way and down is the other way. So this motor has a key on it, which is what they call that little thing that sticks out. And it won't fit in my coupler because it's round. Um, so I could file it out, but temporarily just to test it out, I 3D printed one. And so let's stick that on there. I'm just going to hold the motor there, test it out, down's, down's good, and up is a good speed, I like that. So we want to mount this box flush with this surface, this surface flush with this surface, so I'm going to have to cut out a gap in here. So I will trace a pattern on there to help. I 3D printed a template and this fits in snugly. So the idea is I can trace on there and also use a flush trim bit in my router to go along and get it perfectly. So we're going to hog out most of the material because it's going to be a blind cut into there. And so I'll need to line it up to make sure I don't hit the table underneath here. So it's going to be pretty, pretty far off to the side.
So as you can see, I still have a little bit more material to go, but there's not enough for me to hit it with the uh, Forstner bit anymore. So I'm gonna have to switch over and do the router. Looks like that template bit did a nice job for that depth. Now take the big boy and come in here and gut as much of this as we can. I think I'm going to redesign the case so it's not so deep. There's no really need for it to be that deep. But it should fit in there just really nice. And then I'll route the cables more out the bottom. And we won't have this as much of a problem. Here I'm just checking to make sure that the screws I have won't poke through the top. There are some washer head screws in there. The mount's going to be like an L shaped per se, where this is mounted here and this is mounted to the table. And I'm going to have slots in it so I can move a bit closer and backward, closer and back from the drill press to, to match it up. And I also want to have slots in here so I can move this up and down so I don't have to get it exact. So after a couple of errors, I came up with this. Not the technique for the motor. So I have a plate on here with a four tapped quarter 20 holes in it. And I have these, I believe they're M5s or M6s going into the motor. Um, and then they're socket head cap screws and I just recess them into this piece of wood. And this plops on here so we can have adjustability here. And then this part mounts to the table the drill press table so we can tighten that down and we can move it back and forth so let's get this thing assembled first thing we have to do is put the coupler back on it's 3d printed two these like head cap screws going in to two nuts that are captive over there and then that's the flathead screw that goes into the shaft of the motor so now we have that, now we have to put this on. Only thing is you have to make sure that these line up. Ah, shh. So as I was installing it, that broke off, but I mean, I guess that's what I get for trying to get cheeky and use 3D printed plastic or just 3D printed parts in general. They're great, but they're not very strong. And this is kind of a high torque scenario. So what I did is I found the other half of the coupler that actually came with it. The problem was originally it wouldn't fit on the motor because this motor has a keyway right here. Anyways, so it's, there's a keyway sticking out. And so this wouldn't slide on originally because this was just smooth bore. But what I did is I took one of these little engraving bits for my Dremel. Uh, it's just a little round nose one. And I took it and I engraved the little channel in here. And now it fits over the keyway. So, line that up. Line those up. Tighten it up to the uh, tabletop. With those. And while I'm down here, let's put the power supply in. So it's just a six amp, uh, 24 volt power supply. And I 3D printed some little brackets for it. 
to hold it in. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit and I've shortened all the wires. And I have the wire going from the power supply into the switch and then I have a wire coming from the switch out to the motor.